Welcome to how to configure batch size for your neural network. In this video, we'll review how batch size impacts our training and error convergence. Also, we'll do hands-on by building a multi-layer perceptron to find the right batch size for a naive model using data we generate. So what does a batch size really mean to a neural network training? Say we have a batch size of about 64, then what it means is the 64 samples from our training data set will be used for computing the error gradients when the network is trained. So let's look at this picture and understand what's going on. Following the forward pass where your inputs and weights are actually coming over to this function and then aggregation happens here. Following the summing up we have the activation supplied and an output is being sent out. If the batch size is 64 then 64 samples of output will be queued before it is sent for the error calculation as part of the backpropagation. Okay? So that's what is really happening. So when 64 samples are queued here, all that are sent over here for one error calculation, which then dates the weights during the backpropagation. So now let's come back and define one more terminology, which is the epochs. One epoch means that the learning algorithm has made one pass through the entire training data where the samples are separated randomly into different groups. So let's say we have total records of 6,400, batch size is 64, then we are going to be having 100 batches that the system has prepared, and the error updates are going to be happening 100 times for each epoch. Okay, One epoch means all the 6,400 have been passed through this network, have the backpropagations completed, and the weights have been updated. Okay, that's what it means. Now let's try and understand why batch size really matters and what does it control. The batch size actually controls two things. One is how quickly the model learns, the stability of the model learning process, and number two, the accuracy of the error gradient, also called the precision of the error gradient. So those are the two things that batch size really controls. So what does this mean? A large batch size actually means we are going to be looking at a good estimate of error gradient, but it comes at a computational cost. So let's go back to that picture and think in terms of the number of records queued here before the error calculation happens. If we have 6,400 records, and let's assume 3,000 records is our batch size, then 3,000 records are queued here before an error update happens. And because of the large size of the count, we will obviously have a more precise error update, but it is computationally inefficient because computationally it's a lot more records to be queued up here, like 3,000, before it actually does a weight update. Okay? The small batch size means the error gradients are noisy because there is going to be smaller amounts of information being passed into the error, therefore it is going to be noisy. But it offers you a regularization effect, and it can fit very well into the memory. That's the benefit of a smaller batch size. Now, depending on the batch size we choose, there are three different variations of gradient descent algorithm that we will usually hear about. One is called the batch gradient descent, where the batch size is the total number of samples in our training data set. So if we have 6,400 in our total training data set, if we set the batch size to be 6,400, then that is called batch gradient descent. We have one more version called stochastic gradient descent, which is where the batch size itself is only one, which means each and independent records, each of the record is a batch of its own. Then we have a mini batch gradient descent, which is basically sitting somewhere between the batch gradient descent and the stochastic gradient descent, where the batch size for a mini batch gradient descent is greater than one, but it is less than the total number of records we have in our training data set. Okay? Now, there are a few rules of thumb based on revisions and uh, based on research that have actually been published. And what they find is that usually smaller batch sizes achieves better training stability and generalization. Now, let's move on with our hands-on. So for our hands-on, we are first importing a few modules. So first, we are getting in a sample generator. From the sample generator, this is an sklearn, and we are getting a make blob with which we are going to be generating some data. And we are also importing 
Keras layers. We are getting in the dense layer, sequence layer, and we are getting in an optimizer SGD. Okay. Following that, the other important thing we're importing is matplotlib for our plotting exercises. Okay. All right. Next, let's come over and then let's look at how to generate this data. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be generating 2,000 data records and we want it to be a six class problem. But nothing stops us from updating these values to make it more complex or less complex. So you feel free to play around with these two variables and then automatically data generator will adjust for it. Next is our data generator class. There are three simple things that it does. Number one is as part of its class initialization, it is generating me the data using the make blob function. So it is generating me both X and Y values given the number of classes I've asked for, which in this case is six, and for the number of samples I've asked, which is 2000. Next, it also helps me do a train test split. How do we do? We are fundamentally using all the data that we generated for X and Y, and we are sending in a ratio like 60% for our training. We are using NPRAs for us to basically split the data, the entire X, into train X and test X, and entire Y into train Y and uh, test Y. That's what we have done. And the third thing that it does is it has a plot function, which is going to be displaying using the matplotlib scatter, both the X and the Y values. So we are in two dimensional, so we can show them up, but we're gonna be showing them up all in different colors for each of the clusters that I've got generated. Next, let's define our naive model. So next is our class for naive model. And there are three main purposes again for this class. One is it is going to build us our sequential model, which is a three layered neural network. And that's what the build sequential is actually doing, where we have the first layer with 50 neurons, second layer, 20 neurons, third layer with six neurons. The last layer or the third layer is the output layer. Okay. Again, these are configurable. If we pass them more, then we are gonna have more neurons. And in a separate video, I discuss about how to decide on the number of neurons you need and the number of layers. So if you're interested in figuring that out, you may check out that video. But right now, we are more interested in figuring out how to configure our batch size. So we're taking a very naive approach here with three dense layers. So all these are sequential model layers. Okay. Next, what we do is we compile and fit the model using SGD optimizer. And the important batch parameter is actually used in the fit functions batch size parameter. Okay, This is something that we are taking in as an input to the entire class instance when we are creating the naive model. I do have a plot function. Plots me the evolution of the loss as it's happened during the training. So when the training happens, it gives me an output, which is the history of all the evolution of how the loss has moved. And I'm capturing that information and I'm, I'm basically plotting them into three different graphs. We will see below what those three different graphs are, but they are basically graphs for plotting our accuracy with respect to epochs and one graphs for plotting the validation accuracy with respect to training accuracy, another one with respect to the loss and epochs. Then I do have a naive uh, model factory, which is a utility function that when given the batch size and training and test data, it basically creates an instance of my naive model, fundamentally fits the model, and plots the model. So it does everything for me for in our context, which is one line of code we would have to invoke. Now let's run it and see how things are things are looking. So first we are going to be generating some data. So for that I'm calling the data generator. I'm creating an instance of data generator and I'm plotting it. We have chosen six as our cluster size or the number of classes we want in our output. So therefore, we are seeing six different colors, red. One is red, uh, cyan, green, brown, yellow, and uh, and blue, okay? Then I also call the data uh, generators train test split so that I can have the entire data in training X, test X, and train Y and test Y format. So this is the network summary for the naive model that we have created. So as we discussed earlier, in this particular case, we have the inputs, which are nothing but two featured inputs that is going in. And we are interested in predicting the classes, which are six classes, which we can see in the output layer. And then in the middle, we have two dense layers, which are basically one is layer with 50 neurons, another one layers of 20 neurons. Let's now run a loop with various batch sizes in which we will call the model fit. 
and plot it. We have chosen a batch size of 1, 32, 64, 128, 256, 1024, and the total sample size, which is 2000. Okay, and so we're going into a for loop. For each of the batch size, we are calling the naive model factory, which will basically be creating this network fitted with the training data, validated with the test data, and then we'll have fitted with the batch size as we have passed in, whichever the current batch sizes are. So now let us let us see what the results come out. So for the first one, I will go into a lot of detail about the charts themselves. So for the for the batch size of one, we have now done, we are seeing three uh, charts. This is what we're going to be seeing for any of the batch sizes. So let me go through this chart. First one is an epochs versus accuracy. So we are plotting in both validation accuracy and testing the training accuracy. Uh, validation accuracy in blue, training accuracy in yellow, and on the x-axis I have the epochs. So finally I'm really interested in it reaching higher numbers as early as possible. Okay, That is my interest from the first chart. The second chart I'm actually plotting in both the accuracy on x-axis and then the validation accuracy on the y-axis. So this is my training accuracy, this is validation accuracy, and I'm expecting a more smoother straight linear curve if the validation accuracy grew with same proportion as my training accuracy. Okay. If it moves around and is noisy then it already tells us that validation accuracy is not up to mark compared to a training accuracy for each of those epochs. The third chart tells us about the loss convergence. So here we are calculating a difference between the validation loss and our training loss and we are plotting it with respect to our epochs. So this gives us a really good notion as to how far the validation loss and training loss are move, are differing and also at what point in time are they different. So as we can see with batch sizes 1, it takes around 20 epochs for it to reach 65% accuracy, which I can go, know from my first chart. And then from a loss convergence perspective, it is very noisy as you can see from this third chart. Okay. So let us next see what happens with batch sizes greater than 1. So next batch size we are interested in is batch size is equal to 32. So with batch size 32, we do see that it has reached 65% accuracy in about 15 epochs and then the validation versus training accuracy chart is actually very volatile which is the second chart and then the third chart is much smoother than before yeah soon after the fifth epoch or so it really starts settling down now let's move on and see what 64 bat size gives us from the initial view there is not much of a difference the volatility for my second chart continues to be there the first chart has very similar properties like how it had for batch size 32 and my third chart is a little bit more smoother but not much of value add whether batch size 64 has gotten or not is not is not so clear. Next let's move on and see for batch size of 128. We do see that 65% is reached accuracy is reached over 20 epochs but it reached the 60% mark in just 2 to 3 epochs. So that's a very important thing to see. That's the key difference, which is probably a little bit highlighted here, but we did not make a big note on this, but here it is, it is making a difference. Second, we do see that the validation of the train accuracies are significantly smooth at the early stages when the accuracies are received. And then as the accuracies are increasing, obviously, yes, we are going to be expecting some noise. Okay, And the loss convergence is extremely smooth. It's very good. All right, so next, let's, let's look at 256. We don't see that much difference compared to 128. When, it, when we see for the batch size of 256. So we're going to move on and see for 1024 and batch size of 2000. We do see that the total accuracy is capped around 60% for both of them, though it shows excellent stability from a loss perspective. Yeah, Both are showing excellent stability from validation training accuracy perspective and also from a loss perspective. Okay, Looking through all this and also considering we want our computation to be as efficient as possible, we want to choose something on a lower side that can give us a higher amounts of confidence when it comes to the smoothness of the of the accuracies and also the loss function having converged well. And in that context, we would choose a batch size of 128. Okay. So the ideal answer in our case for this given problem is the batch size of 128. A batch size of 64, as recommended by the research papers and rule of thumb, is a decent starting point but was not the ideal answer for us. So that's worth noting. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
see you in the next video